Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today I'm going to take you through the toolbox in Photoshop Elements. Now this is a new series of tutorials and I'm going to take you through each one of the tools in the toolbar. So let's go ahead and take a look at our toolbox. The first four are the ones that I'm going to cover up here. The next thing that we need to know is this is called the option bar and as I switch different tools you'll notice that the option bar changes options. Now as I hover over each one of the tools you'll notice that there is a letter that corresponds to that tool. So if I hit the V which was the move tool it will jump me to the move tool and it'll place the option bar for the move options right in this gray area right here. So let's go ahead and go through them. Auto select layer pretty simply you can see that I have these red, white, and blue blocks on four different layers. If I click on the red, I can move it. If I can click on the white, I can move it. And as I click on the blue, I can move it. And as you can see, it changes the layer as I move this. That is auto select layer. Now, if I didn't have that selected, what's going to happen is if I try, if I'm on the white layer and I try to move the white layer, it's only going to move the white, but it won't move the blue when I hover over it, and it won't move the red. Now, why would I want to do that? This is for when you're cloning, or maybe you wanted to erase something, or you're using some real detailed work that you don't want it to automatically jump all over the place. For the most part, we keep it selected. The option that goes with this is called Show Highlight on Rollover. And what that does is it allows us to see what layer and what object we're going to select on that layer. So if I go over to the red box, you can see that it's going, if I click it, it will take me to that layer. If I go over to the blue block, block you can see that the little box came over there and that's going to be the layer I'm going to be on. And last but not least, the white box. Show bounding box allows us to see the handles on each one of these as I click on it, which allows us to go in and rotate these things and change its size. I'm going to go and I'm going to use my command or control Z and take that back to the way it was. Now we have a few others here. I am going to take my white and I'm going to place it over my red. Now if I didn't want it this way, I could actually arrange this by bringing the red towards the front. Now, as always, I could take in my layers palette, I could grab the layer and drag it up that way. But what if I wanted to do it using this arrange button? Well, that's not a problem. We're on the red one, and if I wanted to send it backward, I could send it backward and it would place it under the white. So this is very much like a Microsoft type option, which allows you to change the arrangement of your layers. All right, now we're going to move on. We have these th three blocks right here, and I want to align them so that all the top of the boxes are all aligned. Well, the first thing that I need to do is I need to select all three boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to grab these three layers and then I'm going to select align to top edges and as you can see it aligned it as necessary. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to move it out of place here and there we go. Now what if I wanted to distribute these evenly so that there are equal spaces in between these boxes. Well, I could once again select all my layers and then go to distribute and distribute horizontal centers. And there we have it. Now there's an equal amount of space this way. Now once again, I could have this lined up in the middle or I could have it lined up on the end. So let's go ahead and align it. We're going to align it to the bottom edge. And there we go. So now these two spaces are the same and they are all aligned at the bottom. So there is the option bar for our move tool. The next tool I don't use very often, it is the magnifying glass. The only time I ever use it is when I want to zoom in on one specific area. 
I just go to that area, draw a box around it, and it will zoom into that area. Now, if I wanted to zoom using the keyboard shortcuts, I would use the Command Plus and the Command Minus. And what that does allows us to zoom in and out without using this zoom tool. We can also go to the options up here where we want to fit the whole thing into the screen or whether we wanted to fill the whole screen with it or see what it looks like the actual one-on-one -on -one size. If we had multiple windows we could zoom all of our windows. We could also go to the plus and minus up here we could turn the zoom out on and we could go and click on the picture and it would zoom out. So once again, the only time I really use this one is when I'm zooming into a specific point on this. Now, there is a second way of being able to do this, and that's using the navigator. If you don't have the navigator up, you can go to Window, and you can select Navigator, and it'll show you the navigator. One of the things that allows you to do in the navigator is to use this slider bar and go to Zoom Out or Zoom In, and this will show you how much of the picture is being zoomed in on. Alright, the next tool we have is the hand tool that also works with the navigator. If you put the hand tool on a zoomed in picture, you can move that picture around to wherever you want it. Maybe you're working on this blue piece of corner of the block there, or the box. You can move that around so that you could do whatever kind of adjustments you wanted there. This will also show you that this is the part that you have zoomed in on. Now the hand tool, I don't use very often the actual hand tool itself here. And that's because I use the space bar. So let's say I'm painting something, or I'm selecting something, or I'm using the um, paint bucket tool or something, but let's say I'm on a, a brush tool, and I wanted to move this around. I could hold the space bar down, and it will automatically turn it into a hand. I could move it, move the picture to where I wanted to, and when I let go, it would return to the actual paintbrush. I could also go and jump on this navigator window, and I could move it around like that. So I don't really use the hand as it is in the toolbar. I use either the space bar if I'm using it here, or I move it around in the navigator window. As you can see, there is not much to the hand. You can actually scroll all windows. Maybe you want to have all the windows scroll. Once again, you can fit it to screen, you can fill screen, you can do all those options. The last one is our eyedropper tool. Now this one works a lot better if you're on a picture, so I'm going to thank the code poet over there for letting me use this picture as he always does. Maybe I want to get this blue. If I click on this tank top right here, right there, that is the color blue that's right there. If I wanted to get the color of her eye, I would come over here and I would select the color of her eye as green, and that's the green. Now that is a single point sample or a single pixel. If I wanted to average some of the colors, I could do 3x3 three three or 5x5, five five, which is a much larger section. Sometimes that works when you are trying to get the color of somebody's skin, and skin isn't too consistent. So I'm going to come over here, 5x5, five five, and it's going to average that kind of pinkish, beigeish color right there in my eyedropper tool. So those are the four tools that we went over. The Move tool, which is the V key if you hover over it. The Zoom tool, which is Z, which I don't use very often. You can use the command plus and minus. The hand tool, which is the H, which I also don't use very much. I use the space bar, or I use this navigator on the right-hand side. And the last one is the eyedropper tool, which is the letter I. Not E for I, but I for I. This is Chucky. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my videos. I'm going to come back with another lesson on the next four tools. Cheers!